Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics in business calculus, and that is elasticity of demand. It says here, the most common use of elasticity in economics is price elasticity of demand or elasticity of demand with respect to price. This concept allows us to explore the responsiveness of the consumer demand for some product or service to changes in the price of that product or service. So before we go into the formula for calculating what we call the elasticity of demand, I just want to talk about what we mean by elasticity uh, first. So let's talk about um, this. Let's say that, and let's put here the word elasticity. Okay. Okay. So let's say that you are you own a coffee shop and you sell coffee currently at a price of three dollars. So three dollars a cup. And you have a current level of demand, let's say per day. Let's say that per day you sell fifty cups of coffee. So you at a price of three dollars, there are fifty cups demanded per day. Um, and then we have a certain revenue that you bring in. So if you charge three dollars and you sell 50 cups of coffee, then you brought in $150. All right, so let's say that you're trying to decide whether or not you should raise your price. So let's say that you raise your price, and you're going to charge. Now, you think your coffee is very good, and you think, okay, I'm going to charge $5 per cup of coffee now. Now, of course, when you raise your price, what happens to your demand? What we're going to assume for elasticity is that if you raise your price, the demand will go down. And the question is, does it go down enough to make you care that it goes down? So for example, let's say that you raise your price to $5, and let's say that demand for your coffee suddenly drops to 10 cups of coffee a day. Well, well how much revenue now are you bringing in? $5 per cup, 10 cups, now your revenue has decreased to $50. Now your revenue has gone down. So your price went up, revenue went way down. So now you're making a whole lot less money than you were originally. So where does that, what's affected is that your demand is affected. We would call this an elastic relationship. If I can spell the word elastic there. An elastic relationship. That means that if you pulled at the price, think about a rubber band, you pull at that price, a demand is very, uh, the demand is very elastic, the demand will be really affected. So it's going to really hit hard at your demand. Your demand is going to take a nosedive. And if, if it's elastic and your demand takes a nosedive, then your revenue will also take a nosedive. So your revenue is going way down. So we don't want that. Okay. Let's say, though, that let's go back and let's say that you were charging $3.00. Um, let's go back to the idea of demand. You're selling 50 cups, and you make $150 in revenue. So let's let's evaluate a different scenario. Let's say that you do raise your price to $5 per cup, but let's say that your customers are very loyal, and you will lose a few customers. So let's go ahead and make sure we understand that again. If you raise your price, the demand will go down. The question is, how much will it go down? So let's just say for this example that you raise your price, but your demand only goes down to 40 cups of coffee a day. So you do lose 10 people, but was it worth the price increase to lose those 10 people? So let's see, $5 per cup, 40 cups, and now what is your revenue? Your revenue is now $200 per day. So notice here that your revenue has gone up. This would be an inelastic demand. Okay, that means that you tugged at the price, but your demand uh, was not heavily affected. It, it was affected, but not enough to cause you to be concerned because you're still making more money by raising your price than you would have if you did not raise your price. So you only lose a few people, but not enough to make you worried because your revenue is going up because you raised your price. Okay, so this is the idea of elasticity of demand. Uh, we have a formula that tells us whether or not the demand for this particular product is elastic or inelastic. Okay, so let's go back to our original notes. 
um, we have a formula and it goes back to that percentage rate of change that relative rate of change that we talked about in the last video so we um, are going to um, have a formula here uh, what goes on the top is the percent rate of change of the quantity demanded okay um, we assume that the remember the quantity if our price goes up that the demand will go down we just want to know by how much and do we care about what that that number is um, and then we're gonna divide that by the percent rate of change of the unit price so if we raise the price oops, we're looking for how does this affect the demand all right so here we have a um, kind of a formula that we're gonna be making that says let X represents the quantity demanded let P be the unit price in dollars so we'll have that kind of out of the way this is our demand function when we discuss elasticity it is more convenient we say to think of P as an independent variable in the function so this is important um, and X as the dependent variable so we want to think about if we change the price so if you make a change to P the price how does it affect demand so we're gonna be writing the function as a function of price okay so P represents that independent variable now X is representing um, the dependent variable All right so we're gonna rewrite as a function of P um, now remember that from the last section we talked about that relative rate of change this is what our formula looked like it was the derivative of the function divided by the original function and if we're looking for percentages then we had the 100 multiplied in um, percentage rate of change of the unit price is going to go at the bottom and so our formula looks something like this so the derivative of P um, divided by P the original price so the change in price is what this represents divided by the original price and multiply by 100 to get that percentage now I'm not expecting you to actually memorize this I will actually give you the formula we're gonna simplify the formula um, but I'm gonna give you the formula for all of this so we just want to kind of ease your ease your mind here I'm not gonna expect for you to come up with all of this on your own um, a couple of things though the percentages basically end up uh, canceling each other out the 100s end up canceling each other out the derivative of P with respect to P is 1 think about that as kind of like that variable X the derivative of X is 1 the derivative of P with respect to P is 1 so that's where we get that so basically what happens is we end up flipping the bottom fraction um, and then multiplying across so we actually end up with a much simpler formula um, in the end for elasticity of demand now you don't have to memorize all of that the steps are there some cancellation properties flipping the bottom fraction and multiplying we get a much simpler formula and so here's what we get in the end okay elasticity of demand we have a dif uh, differential function so we have the derivative of that function um, f um, divided by the original function of f and then we multiply that by P that price okay that original P um, and then we multi we uh, call it, it's a negative um, a negative uh, function or negative formula um, economists prefer to think of it as some a negative value because the demand is going down um, anyways this is our elasticity of demand formula and this will be given to you on the exam all right so you do not have to memorize this the formula will be given to you on the exam what I'm really looking for is can you use the formula and can you interpret the results from that formula okay so let's look at um, a couple of things that are going to come out of this formula uh, we talked about the ideas of elasticity uh, the demand is said to be elastic so we're going to use the formula if the number turns out to be greater than one then we say that the demand is elastic okay remember that means that we raise the price the demand is going to be heavily affected it's going to go way down okay so if we use our formula and the number comes out to be greater than one that's elastic that's an uh, elastic demand if the number turns out to be less than one once we plug everything into our formula then it tells me that the demand is inelastic all right so we're going to use um, the formula to come up with uh, determining is it elastic or is it inelastic um, 
let's go to the next page and look a little look at a little table. So elasticity and revenue, we've kind of already talked about this um, on that blank note. Um, it says here if the demand is elastic, okay, so if the demand is elastic, then a small increase in the unit price will cause the revenue to decrease, whereas a small decrease in the unit price will cause the revenue to increase. So we're going to make a little table here. Um, price and revenue. Okay. So if I'm talking about an elastic demand, if I raise the price, my demand is going to go way down, so my revenue is going to take a nosedive. So the money that I'm bringing in, remember revenue is the money we're bringing in, is going to go way down. Okay. If I lower my price, um, my customers are apparently very price sensitive here. If I lower my price, then that means that my demand will go up and I will end up selling more cups of coffee um, for going back to that last example and my revenue will increase. All right. So for an elastic demand, if I raise the price, my customers are very price sensitive. That's what you could think about with elastic. Think about your customers being very price sensitive. That means that they are very aware of what that price is and they're like penny pinching. So if you raise that price, people are going to stop buying. The revenue is going to go down. Um, if you lower your price and they're going to be very happy and excited and you're going to get more customers in there and you're going to sell more cups of coffee and the revenue is going to go up. So elastic, that, that means your customers are very price sensitive. Okay. In elastic, your customers don't care what you charge. They're going to buy it no matter what. That's what you want to think about. Your customers are not price sensitive. So you can think about them as being insensitive. So inelastic, insensitive. In other words, if you raise your price, your revenue is going up. You're not going to lose a lot of customers. Your customers are not super concerned. They're not super sensitive to that price. So you raise your price, the revenue will go up. You'll have you'll keep enough customers to where your your money will go up. Okay. Um, if you lower your price, then you will lose revenue. Okay. So that means. You lower your price, the same amount of customers are still going to buy it. You're not going to gain anyone. The customers don't really care. If you raise the price or lower the price, they're going to buy what they're going to buy. And so lowering your price is not going to help you. And in fact, you're, if you lower your price, your revenue is going to go down. So we don't want to do that. All right. Now, a unitary demand, a lot of people get confused with unitary. Unitary means that uh, it says there, a small increase or decrease in the unit price will cause the revenue to stay about the same. So in this case, um, you are actually charging the ideal price. So I'm going to put this here. You are charging the ideal price. That means that you should not change your price. If demand is unitary, it means that if you raise your price or lower your price, your revenue is not going to change a whole lot. If you make a small increase or decrease, you are actually charging the maximum price that you want to charge, and you're making the maximum amount of revenue. So you should stop where you're ahead, in other words. Just stop where you are and don't make any changes. So that's a maximum revenue. All right. So note here, if the demand is elastic, then the change in revenue and the change in price move in opposite directions. So we notice this relationship here. So if we're talking about elastic, price goes up, revenue goes down. Price goes down, revenue goes up. So if we're talking about elastic, the revenue and price go in opposite directions. So I like this little note here. Um, note two, if the demand is inelastic, then price goes up, revenue goes up. So they move in the same direction. Uh, price goes down, revenue goes down. So they move in the same direction there.